In 2019, I read 99 books. That doesn't sound good enough. 100 is a lot more appealing. Hold on one second. In 2019, I read 100 books. And in this video, I'm gonna hopefully help you read 100 books in 2020. Everything I create is for all the dreamers and doers. I want to give them that joyful confidence that Jesus offers us a better way to life and he offers us a better way to lead. My kids are here. I'm trying to do a video while my wife is away. I'm supposed to be babysitting. I can see the comments now. I know it's not babysitting. It's just being a dad. And that's what I'm doing right now. Say cheese. You're so sweet. <laughs> All right, back to the video. This is what's helped me. This is not exhaustive, but here's some things that I changed that helped me. Okay. Honestly, number one is a candle. I wake up at 5 a.m. and the first thing I do is I grab this candle. They are, have you heard of these? It crackles as it burns. <gasps> Can you hear, what? Can you hear that? Did you hear that? I love this, so it's just me, God, and this crackling candle. It really does help a lot. The second tip, I did not make it about chapters per day or number of pages per day, I just made it about time. From five to six, I read, and that's all I worried about. And I went up getting a lot more done than I realized. Number three, I actually gave myself some weeks off. Sometimes I just didn't feel like reading, I only wanted to read the Bible, or I just wanted to listen to podcasts, and I gave myself the freedom of that. I wanted to make sure I didn't do it too long, but in the middle of the year, I just felt like it was okay to take a break, and it wound up helping me a lot. The fourth thing I did is I picked the right books. How do you pick the right books? I usually have three different topics. I want to read books about the presence of God, um, just who God is, all that sort of stuff. The second thing is formation. I want to learn about my habits. I want to learn about my soul, mind, body, strength, how all those things go together, spiritual formation, just look that up. And the third type is mission. How can I lead other people towards Christ, but also, you know, those who are believers and non-believers. So those three categories are how I've kind of always been like, okay, I need to make sure I have a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And it's honestly helped me a lot. And I'm grateful if you look at those 99 books, a lot of them are like that. Honestly, of all years, I leaned heavily into spiritual formation in 2019. And if you haven't done that before, you're welcome. Number five tip, I would tell you is to figure out what books to read. Look up footnotes. If you have a book that you really enjoy that has made a difference in your life, read that book, go to the end at the end notes, the footnotes, because those books are referencing other great books. That is the number one way I have grown my library this year. I've really enjoyed books. For example, Edward Freeman, I mentioned that book in the top 20 books of 2020. The only reason I found out about that book is because Mark Sayers in his book, Reappearing Church, which is also in the 20 books in 2020, kept referencing that book. So I thought I have to read it and I'm so grateful that I did. Number six, I always made sure to snapshot anytime somebody on Instagram or Twitter, a pastor or a leader or somebody I care about reference a book, how much it changed their life or what they enjoyed. I snapshotted it, put it in the Amazon wish list, and made sure that I made a priority to check it out online to see some reviews and then buy it and add it to my library. Number seven, I stopped believing the myth that why read because I'm not going to remember anything at all. So many people are like, hey, I'm not gonna remember anyways, why do I even try? My thing is, how about you give God an opportunity to possibly remember things? And I think it's a whole lot better than watching TV or doing a myriad of other things. And honestly though, for me, it's pretty life-giving. So I actually learned that about myself and I'm grateful uh, how life-giving it has been. So yeah, even if it, I don't remember it in two years, it was really helpful for this week and it's better than a million other things I could have done. The eight number thing, I actually started Sabbathing this year, which gave me a lot of energy. The rest of the week to read, but also not only that, I actually started to read on my Sabbath days and usually I would just start and finish an entire book. I was really careful to do books that didn't cause stress or anxiety in my life about how I'm just this terrible leader, I have so much to grow in. It's usually something about God, something devotional, and I was so grateful for that time reading books on my Sabbath days. It, it was a joyful thing I'm excited to continue to do in 2020. Number nine is if you found a quote, highlight it, take a picture of it, 
get a sticky note, put it in the page. I've done all those different things. I usually file things away in my note system on my phone um, because I want to be able to use it for later. Honestly, it's just something that I really think I'm going to quote one day in a sermon. I put a big Q right next to it. If it's something that I just really like, I put a big X. I do different coloring systems. Figure out your own system. It really is helpful and it's so fun to go back to any of my old books, quickly flip through, which is why I stopped doing Kindle because it's so nice to quickly flip through everything and find what I want to find. Number 10 is find out the authors that you like and start reading all of their books. I think it's helpful to kind of, you learn their rhythm and so you actually read their books faster if you start to read them one after another. Now that's something that I like to do. So I did that this year with Dallas Willard, John Orberg, James K.A. Smith, and Eugene Peterson. Oh, I guess that's another tip. Always have a few books on deck because when you finish one, a lot of times I was inspired to keep reading and there were a few times where I didn't have another book to read. I read everything on my bookshelf and it was just kind of a Debbie Downer. Bonus round. Here's my biggest encouragement. Don't let this become a self-righteous thing or a self-rejecting thing. Don't make the number of books, which is why I'm thankful. I had no idea how many books I read until three days ago. Don't make it about what you're doing, how much better you are than somebody else. I think God, um, in October, I started to really start bragging about the number of books I was reading per week, and God put me through a phase where I was so not productive. I was not learning anything, and I realized, oh, I was starting to read for all the wrong reasons. So don't get self-righteous about it, but also don't get self-rejecting. In October, I was so mad at myself because I was not keeping up with the pace, and I realized, oh, this was a time for God calling me to pray and to just lean into him more and not read so much and just listen some more. So be attentive to what God has for you. I actually think that's why 12 month plans aren't helpful because you never know what God's gonna do in your life in four months and don't be so rigid that you're not letting God kind of move things around. Let me know down below how many books you read in 2019 and how many books you're looking forward to read this next year. Remember, Jesus is better. Let go of it. Let go. Can I try? <laughs> Can I try? <laughs>